Welcome, friends. Uh, thank you for giving us an opportunity to present our Detroit Friends Meeting journey and our future plans for a new meeting house in the city of Detroit. Um, the presentation shall be about 30 minutes, and we'd like to go through the presentation first and then take your questions or comments at the end of the presentation. Uh, what you're looking at right now is the initial rendering uh, of our proposed meeting house. And this rendering actually was done by one of our regular, um, uh, she's a regular architectural designer and her name is Cassandra Kale. So next slide, please, Bill. Just to give you some historical background on the Detroit Friends Meeting, uh, Detroit was referred to as Midnight on the Underground Railroad, and it was the last stop on the flight for freedom, supported by many Quaker abolitionists. Then in 1926, we were formally recognized as a monthly meeting in the city of Detroit. And for the first 60 years, uh, we had no permanent home in Detroit. So um, the meeting rented uh, the YMCA, and then they also worshiped in members' homes. Then in the 1980s, the meeting took a stand against white flight in the city of Detroit and purchased and renovated an old jewelry store uh, in an industrial area on Fort Street. The surrounding neighborhood gradually deteriorated, but it presented rich opportunities as well as challenges. Uh, next slide, please, Bill. Some of the challenges were that the uh, Pitbull Tattoo Parlor was the business that was attached to our building by a, uh, a wall. We shared a, a common brick wall. And uh, it had become abandoned through the years and it was destroyed by a major fire. And the amazing thing was, is no one was injured and the meeting house survived that fire. And as you notice in the uh, photograph, you can see that the, uh, the wall is the one that is blackened. So it truly was a miracle. However, this same wall created a beautiful canvas for graffiti art artists in the neighborhood. And members had to paint over it twice to avoid paying the fines uh, that would be assessed by the city of Detroit. Uh, the meeting house was broken into many times and many items were stolen, an air conditioning unit, furnace, fans, tools, kitchen appliances, and even our electric meter was stolen. So one morning we worshiped with very little light, but it was a very peaceful and meaningful worship service. Uh, the one thing is, is that we always noticed that our treasured books were always safe. They managed to leave those intact on the bookshelves. The front door was always open and we felt that we were very welcoming to others in the nearby area. Okay, next slide, please, Bill. Um, our journey has been an interesting one. Um, the state of Michigan notified us that they needed our property in order to build an international bridge between uh, Canada and the United States. So that was in 2017. So one of the first things that we did is we hired a very prominent uh, eminent domain lawyer, but he soon became very frustrated with us and our Quaker process, so we parted ways. During our negotiations with the state, our meeting house was not given the same value and legal status as another church in the area. They stated that we lacked an altar and religious symbols were not displayed. So therefore we were not of equal value as the church next door. So we've rented and then friend's school was laid down. So now we are the only presence of Quakers in Detroit. We've rented since uh, 2017 when we lost our space and we rented an activity center that was owned by Cass Community United Methodist Church. They recently sold the activity center, so we had to leave that um, building 
And they recently uh, received, I think it was $1.3 million for that property. The property in Detroit each year was increasing in value. So since that time, we have met virtually and we've met on Belle Isle Island uh, in Detroit. We went to the uh, Detroit Land Bank Authority as one of our first steps to see if we could buy property from them. A lot of times this, um, the large decision in order to build a meeting house or to continue to rent, um, it did, there was quite a bit of discussion around it, but we did come to unity on the fact that we wanted to build a new meeting house in the city of Detroit and make it a permanent home that could be appreciated for years to come. But it did become a spiritual distraction at times. We have to admit that. Okay, next slide, please, Bill. Right here, you're looking at a basic map of where our property is located. It's located on 14th Street in the core city of Detroit. They were three parcels, or they are three parcels of land, approximately one and a half acres. And uh, as some of you can envision where we're at, we are at um, probably a mile away from the, the large Michigan train station that's being renovated by the Ford Motor Company right now. We should close on the property at the end of this month after completing all the due diligence uh, requirements. We obtained this property from the Detroit Land Bank Authority and actually one of our assigned representatives from the Land Bank was a former student from Friends School in Detroit. So we didn't have to explain to him about the Quaker faith. He certainly understood it and appreciated it. Uh, the remediation of contamination on this land from an auto shop in the 1920s on the back of the property, as well as the demolished homes on these three parcels were, are going to add to the cost of the building too. Okay, next slide, please, Bill. Uh, the development committee is comprised of four members. Mark Mishner is the convener, Kevin Howley, Peter Dale, and myself. The Detroit Friends Meeting has 25 members and 10 to 15 regular attenders. We are considered an international meeting because four of our members and attenders are from Windsor, Ontario. There's been an increase in interested attenders over the last several years, and this has inspired us and, and it creates a need to have a permanent home in Detroit. Okay, next slide, please, Bill. And this is Kevin's. So good evening, uh, friends. As um, Sharon alluded to, we've been talking for many, many years, and it has been distracting about what to do next. And there are a lot of concerns about the money that we receive from the state, and then the money that would need it that would be needed to be raised uh, to make this project successful. Um, we reference here uh, Henry Freeman, who talked about a quick perspective on money and fundraising. And you can do some Googling on him to learn more. But you know, we walked through a lot of these issues. Um, and at the end of the day, the think the fact that we were able to achieve some unity within the meeting, um, it was like a revelation at that moment, obviously, because we've been talking about it for so long. But then these other things came into play, really um, the development committee embracing uh, our mission and really thinking about it as a mission for the long term. Um, it wasn't a short term goal to simply build a building. Uh, the Quaker presence in Detroit is absolutely critical and we feel it's necessary. And we believe that we're laying the framework and the, ground, the groundwork for generations that will come after us. So it's not just about what we're doing today. Um, really tried to focus on the functionality of the building, our, our ability to interface with the community and the building, and our role in the city of Detroit. Uh, so not only will we be looking at raising money, which will be critical, but we've really gotten the meeting involved, our very small meeting, uh, in terms of uh, the committee structure that we've set up relative to identifying the architectural design and do getting the quotes to build it out and just taking care of the property and all the issues that you can imagine around it. So it's really brought us together. Uh, next slide. 
So at this point, um, we've, we've done a lot of work uh, over the last couple of years around the cost of the building and the related connection to the neighborhood. So while we need to build a building, we need to make the building accessible. Uh, and we also need to make sure that we have a, a property that's consistent with uh, being good neighbors. So it's not just, just getting the building up. Um, as a point of reference, uh, and we believe that will cost about $850,000. We did receive from the state $287,000. Um, just as a point of reference, the church next door to us that Sharon referred to, I think got right around $1.2 million. So this gives you a feel for what we went through emotionally in trying to battle the state and to be recognized. Um, in some ways, you know, you could say we lost. In other ways, we feel like, well, we have to move on and we have this $287,000 to start with. Um, the, not, the important thing to note at this point is with our total goal being 850,000, we're only um, 430,000 dollars away from meeting that goal at this time. We're literally halfway to our objectives. The meeting itself, while, even while we were debating what we would do in the future, uh, we continued to save consistently within the meeting. And of course, at this point, we are getting direct, uh, donations directly from meeting members. So this, to this day, we're up to $93,000 just from members alone. Uh, so members are making a significant commitment financially in a very small meeting uh, with, within a community at risk where we don't have a lot of members that have deep pockets. Uh, we have received one donation of $35,000, which was incredible uh, to help jumpstart our, uh, our path. And then we're now just starting to reach out to other people in other meetings. And we also will be reaching out to the business community and the, um, the faith community in Detroit to support um, our objectives with this project. We are making applications to um, various organizations that could provide grants. Um, we're, we're very busy and we're being very aggressive. Next slide, please. This, um, pyramid, one would put it in a pyramid form, but this gives you a sense for what we're trying to think about as a committee in terms of our outreach. There's no way we're gonna raise another $400,000 without getting some substantial donations. And we're gonna be asking for substantial donations from uh, friends and other community members that have the resources to help us. Um, we feel like we have a good story and an important story, um, but we will need large donors and we'll need a lot of smaller donors. So. Um, Every investment is going to be important in this project, uh, but we have to we have to plan along a grand scale and figure out how we're going to get this done. We've been doing that. Um, for those of you who are interested, um, we can accept the uh, donation of stocks through direct transfer to Friends Fiduciary. We have a relationship set up with them to make that easy for your donations. Um, we can also talk with you directly about distributions from your IRAs or other giving ways to give. Um, to the project, but um, we've, we've got a long road, but we're, we're halfway there. Next slide, please. In terms of the, um, the, in, the short and long-term considerations, uh, we have seen increased attendance virtually by about 20%. And so we are real pleased in seeing that. Um, it's going to fulfill our commitment to the, maintain this Quaker presence that's so important in the city of Detroit. It's going to give us opportunities to use our meeting house to benefit the local community. We can also host regional Quaker events such as Green Pastures Quarterly Meeting. If we own a meeting house to worship in, it will be used hopefully for future generations of Quakers. And one of the things that the members of the meeting felt very strongly about, and that was that this building be used the other six days of the week by other nonprofit organizations or, or those that share our values. Next slide, please, Bill. The new proposed meeting house, it's, it will be a green building, environmentally sound, Long-term, it'll be a long-term sustainable facility, approximately 2,800 square feet with a permeable parking lot. We're going to uh, research and do a physical land acknowledgement of those that owned the property before us. 
We're making sure it's ADA compliant. We're using the passive house model, which is a Euro standard for low energy usage. And all of these things um, we're striving for, but some may be dependent upon our uh, fundraising results because a lot of these are very costly. For example, uh, the roof structure, uh, we're going to go, we're trying to go with the metal roof because of the fact that the solar panels can be installed perhaps at a later date if we don't have enough money initially. Okay. Uh, there will be others here tonight. Mark Mishner, I believe, is here, and Dave Gedeke, and they can add, um, answer some of your specific questions about the construction of the uh, new mini house. Okay, next slide, please, Bill. Okay. So, for friends who would like to support our efforts, um, you can find through our website, of course, our address, um, but we just have posted this on here for you. Uh, there's no doubt that we're gonna need your assistance uh, financially, uh, spiritually, emotionally, and um, in, every, in every way, because this is a, a big project where we are investing a lot of time. Um, if we go to the next slide, I would encourage you to go to our uh, website. We've done a lot of work on the website to try to set up our infrastructure for this process be before we kind of went live with our next step in the fundraising. So on the main page, you'll, you'll kind of get a summary of what's going on with the new meeting house um, and also see a way to donate. But within that too, on the top, you'll find a tab uh, that will give you more information about the meeting house, uh, new meeting house project. In fact, there's a um, presentation, a video on there that I would encourage you guys to watch at your leisure, um, talking about the project, what it means to people in the meeting and the perspective of different members in the meeting. So you know many of the people that are in the video and I think you'd enjoy it. Um, there also are more uh, slides and pictures related to the meeting house um, as it's designed itself. So I think there are three or, more, three or four more uh, pictures to look at there. There's some history there about the meeting, but I definitely would encourage you to, um, to go to the website and poke around. Back to Sharon. And in terms of long-term considerations, um, we always think of that quote that the true meaning of life is to plant trees under whose shade you may not expect to sit. Um, of course, we expect a lot of those uh, from the uh, Green Pastures quarterly meeting and Lake Erie yearly, yearly meeting to come and worship with us once the new meeting house is built. That would be a uh, that would be a delight for all of us to share this new mini house with you and worship with you in it. Um, many Quakers today are worshiping in mean houses built hundreds of years ago. And that's what we hope in building this structure, that it will last for hundreds of years so that uh, the presence of the, the Quakers in Detroit will remain strong. Uh, the work of this committee is basically to help ensure that that Quaker light continues to shine in Detroit. Next slide, please, Bill. So I wanna thank you tonight for your time today, for listening, encouraging us, supporting us and caring and um, the contributions we've received so far and the contributions from Green Pastures quarterly meeting and Lake Erie yearly meeting has been a real inspiration for us and has really made a difference because there have been times when we're wondering if this task is too large for us. And then, and then we get supportive words from one of you and, and it just lifts our spirits. So we wanna thank you very much for that. And so now I think it would be time to uh, perhaps, and if you want this um, presentation to sent to your meeting, uh, I'd be happy to do that or Bill can do that. Um, so that's an option. And also I'll be contacting your individual clerks and so they'll have access to this. 